folks, I'm Lindsay. I'm the head of teen services at the Sterling Library in Loudoun County, Virginia, and I'd like to welcome you to a book and craft pairing. Um, today I'm going to tell you about a book that I've read and enjoyed, and then show you a craft that pairs well with the story. The book I want to tell you about today is called The Do's and Donuts of Love. It's a sophic love triangle romance, perfect for people who like puns, second chance romances, and have ever enjoyed an episode of The Great British Bake Off. This story follows an Irish Bangladeshi girl named Shireen, who, while reeling from a recent breakup with her ex-girlfriend, finds that she's been chosen to be a contestant on the first season of the televised Junior Irish Baking Show. She realizes that this is a huge opportunity, it could kickstart her career, it'll give her a chance to work with one of her favorite bakers, Padma Bollywood, and if she wins and gets prize money and publicity, it means that she could help her parents' struggling donut shop, You Drive Me Glazy. But the problem comes when she goes to the first day of the actual competition and finds that her ex, Chris, was also chosen to be a competitor. Now Shireen needs to deal with her complicated feelings for Chris while also navigating a new crush on a fellow competitor, Neve, who seems to like Shireen also. But if Shireen wants to win, she knows that she'll have to block out all distractions, including sabotage. In this book, the stakes are high, the competition is fierce, and some tough topics are discussed, like racism, microaggressions, and fat phobia. But overall, it's a pretty lighthearted novel that's really fun. Uh, the characters are great and easy to root for. There's puns in all of the chapter titles, and the baking challenges are really unique and fun to read about. Now my friend Morgan from the Gumspring Library is going to join me and we'll do a craft that relates to the book. While it may make sense to bake something for a book like this, felt donuts will last longer and don't require any special materials. But what you will need is something to make your pattern out of, so two circles. A piece of paper for your pattern, felt for your donut, for icing. If you're gonna make a lot, you can buy stuff to stuff it with, or if you're gonna make just a couple, use some cotton balls. Needle and thread, glue, and scissors. So step one is to make your pattern. I'm gonna use a mug and a nickel. And to know where center is for your other circle, I like to fold this in quarters. Trace the little circle. And the donut pattern. For every donut, you'll need two out of your felt for your donut color and one out of whatever frosting you want. Morgan, do you want white frosting or pink frosting? Ooh, well, I'll go with white frosting. If you have white. Magic. Yay! <laughs> Donut pieces. Donut I was wondering pieces. how you got the little hole in there. So did you fold these up too and then cut like that? Yeah, when fold it in half circles? and okay. get the cut started. Got it. Have a needle. Thanks. And we'll do this with just a single layer of thread. Sometimes it gets a little complicated getting two layers to stay together the whole time, mm -hmm. and one will be strong enough. So you'll need more than it seems to go around, but if you need another piece of thread, get it whenever. There's some thread, there's some scissors. Let's see if I can thread this needle. 
If you can't, I gotcha. They are kind of small. <laughs> I'm also very old, so join the club. And you'll only need a knot at one end of your thread on whichever side of the thread is going to be longer. Oh, yeah, so that's probably a good amount of thread. Cut it and tie a knot on the long end. Okay. Have you ever done a blanket stitch? No. Well, you are today. Okay. <laughs> so have both of your donuts together. Okay. And you're gonna do the same thing here, starting in the center to hide your knot. Making a loop all the way around. And putting the needle back through that loop before pulling it tight. Now for a lot of stuffed things, you would want to sew almost the entire thing before stuffing it, but because these donuts are pretty narrow, I recommend stuffing as you go. So once you have a couple inches stuffed shut, grab a cotton ball, fluff it open a little bit. I like to use a pencil to get it in there. Now you have a 3D donut. And you'll just continue the same stitch, pulling tight anything that may have gotten loose while you were stuffing. When you get to the end and you have it all stuffed, you'll just keep sewing it closed like you were. Make sure that you do have stuffing in that last area and just sew over the stuffing. And there's your donut. Yay! Plain donut. Yeah. Old fashioned, my favorite. <laughs> well, I like them with icing and we'll put sprinkles on too. Cool. So the, your icing circle starts just the same as your donut circle. But if you wanna make it not quite the same shape, and give it a little bit of personality. Um, I think it's taken me like, I think it was five or six cotton balls in that one. Oh, okay, I'm behind on my cotton balls. Yeah. So for sprinkles, I just use different colors of thread. But because I want them to be pretty visible, I would do the thread two layers thick for these. Let's start in the back. Just make a little stitch to bring it be a sprinkle. And then go wherever you want your next sprinkle to be. When you've got all the sprinkles you want of one color, or if you're running out of thread, just tie it off. some yellow sprinkles.
Once all of your sprinkles are on your icing, it's time to put your icing on your donut. And this part can just be done with glue. And there you have it.